y'all, good morning. I have done it. I finally finished reading The Ferryman by Justin Cronin that came out recently. It's a sci-fi book. I really enjoyed it, even though it took me over two weeks to read because just not having time to physically sit down and read it and no audiobook companion to go with it. But um, as you could tell, th there was thoughts. There was a lot of thoughts with this one. So we're going to talk about this one, do the review today. Uh, there will be spoilers because talking about some stuff is, um, yeah, it's hard to do without getting into the spoilers, but that will be its own little section. And at the beginning, we will just do the description, who the characters were, what the main things happening are, and get into that. So, please stick around, and I hope you enjoy. Let's start off with who the main characters, well, really, main character is. You will have a time where you can see through other people's points of view, and I hope that those cars going by were not too loud. Um, but mostly, you're only ever going to see through Proctor Bennett. He is a ferryman in this place, and so his job is to take the older citizens into their retirement. So he takes them to the ferry to retire them and, you know, to where they can start their new lives. And every other person that you will see from in the book is in some way connected to Proctor. Like, the other person that you will see through, I feel like, the most is Thea Demopolis. Her and Proctor are both Prosperans, which I'll explain what that is later. They, um, so they both have this, like, kind of easy life existence. Thea is actually an art curator at an art museum that she has because she really loves art, though. She describes everything in her, it's not a museum, it's a, a place where you go to buy art. Uh, she describes it all as quite uh, bland and boring, but she knows this one artist, though, who really does make art that speaks to you. Like, you can look at it and it just draws emotions out of you. It's not flat. But she comes into Proctor's life kind of to get information on him. So it's actually kind of quite calculated how she comes into Proctor's life, but they do have this connection that... Uh, does she know about that? I think she does know about that. And then they develop this kind of bond because Proctor's wife, who you don't see through her perspective though until late, late book. She, uh, I feel like the beginning book her and why I even made notes of like, oh my gosh, she just doesn't care. Why is she treating him like this? I feel like she's like that for reasons that you don't find out to the end. So you will probably really dislike Elise because Proctor is going through things, like horrible things. And she's all worried more about herself. Her, she's a fashion designer, her new show line coming out, her this, her that, how you're making me look bad. And I'm like, oh my God, she's a horrible, horrible person. She's, <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so moving from characters into the actual description of the book. As I said, our main character is Proctor, and where he lives, and all of this pretty much takes place, is on the island of Prospero. This is in an archipelago, which is three islands, in the middle of the ocean, that is set apart from the world, and they, well, they know that someone called the Director formed this community, they're not sure how long ago, it seems like a while, but they do have, you know, technology and stuff to get away from the problems of the world and the catastrophes of the world. On Prospero, people are not born, but at 16, they are adopted into families from the nursery. And at that point, you have a thing in your forearm that monitors your mental, physical well-being. Actually, does it monitor your mental? You might not really monitor the mental aspect but it monitors your well-being and you will have a percentage and you can live up into like the 130 range but like when the percentage goes down you are retired which is what proctor does it also doesn't you don't have to live that long some people you know they do actually have sicknesses and diseases and so people do you know die earlier if the percentage goes down you're retired so proctor's job is to ferry these people who are reaching the end of their iteration to the nursery, which is the smallest of the three islands, to be reiterated and come back again as a 16-year-old. Your memories and everything are wiped, and that way there is no confusion of families and things. It is some interesting concepts in that one. But he doesn't see it as a sad job, really. He sees it as he's there to care for people in their last moments to try and give them a peaceful send-off. 
Then one day Proctor is called on to retire his own father, which is a very conflicting emotion because him and his father have not really spoken over the last few years. His father is actually willingly retiring himself, but there is some complications though as it says when a lot of people there do reach this age even though they're willing to go as the finality of it on at the ferry seeing the ferry sinks in they do have uh, second thoughts and so it's proctor's job to still kind of calm them and walk through it but his dad freaks his dad freaks he takes off and unfortunately it's not just proctor who tries to stop him there is also like the police force they call them watchmen they stare at the ferry and they were very over eager and like they tackle this really old man, I think he was 126, and they shock him, and so Proctor just like loses it and like attacks the kid, and um, yeah, this causes lots of problems for Proctor down the road, but at this point in time, he is there his dad, and his dad's kind of saying something, and they're, as having advanced technology, there are drones flying around, and they see this, they see his dad saying something, and this is also what causes problems. He gets his dad on the ferry though and you know he's going through this very hard traumatic time of having his dad just retired which is when he would need his wife's support but she's not there for him. No no she kind of makes him feel like he's losing his mind more and everybody kind of with the government and around him is also making him feel like he's losing his mind. As these tales keep changing small things keep not showing up the same or people make comments that don't add up and Proctor's slowly starting to put the pieces together of what's really going on here, trying to figure out why this is happening, what his dad meant, why are people being weird, and why is, like, what is the right word here? Why is, um, why is information changing or disappearing or people saying that something happened that didn't happen? And as a secondary story that Proctor will eventually get drawn into, there are the people of the third island, which is a smaller size, very much less, oh, before I say that though, uh, Prospero, the, the largest island where Proctor lives, it is a utopia. Like, as I said, people can live over a hundred years and it is an island paradise. Beautiful weather most of the time, lovely food, you can relax, you can do whatever kind of job you want that's, you know, art, music, practical, you know, government jobs like Proctor does, doctors, but no physical labor jobs. You don't have to demean yourself to doing that sort of thing. No, no, you just get to live uh, this wonderful luxury life. So, um, in this sprawling countryside where everybody's like richly done and laps of luxury places and do whatever they want, there, um, there do have to be people to do the manual labor, of course, and those would be the people that live on the annex, which is the third island. They live normal lives. They are born, they grow, and they die. Not like the Prosperans at all. And they have to do all of this manual labor, all of the tasks, like they call them support staff. That's literally what the Prosperans call them, is the support staff. They, you know, run the city sanitation. They are your housekeepers, your waiters. I wouldn't really say that chefs so much because I think some people, you know, the Prosperans would consider chef an artsy profession. Some of them might be chefs, but um, so yeah, there is that. And they're very much treated as second-class citizens. Some of the Prosperans don't even look at the people of the Annex as human. Very much, very much undertreated. They don't care if they hurt them or if they starve to death, pretty much, because the annex is not maintained well. It is not a nice-looking place like Prospero is. Due to this, the people of the annex, you know, are, of course, unhappy, and the unrest builds over time. And at this point, though, they're really, really pushing back. Like, there are people going on strikes, just not showing up for work of that nature. And in the group of this, there is a group known as the Arrivalists, which is a semi-religious uh, organization that is really pushing for a revolution, is pushing for change, is trying to not be violent so much as just open people's minds, educate people, show that they are still humans, and just get a balance, kind of. It's, yeah. Proctor gets pulled into this by Thea, because Thea is kind of a double agent. She is a prosperer, but 
in her search for real art, she found an artist in the annex. And even though he's a blind man, his paintings evoke such feeling in you. And so she gets pulled into the arrivalist movement and that's why she goes and meets Proctor is because they notice what happened at the ferry too. And they're trying to find out what he knows. And this just draws Proctor into a whole lot of mess, a whole lot of mess. But if it hadn't happened like that, the things towards the end, those chain of events never would have happened. And that probably would have been horrible for everything. The big themes of the book then are going to be a uh, kind of the social unrest, the social inequality there between the prosperings and the revivalists and how, you know, you shouldn't try to p treat people like that, as well as when you think you're in a utopia, how you can start to see the cracks, like Proctor's biggest thing of what was happening through the book and his motivations were kind of picking at those cracks, trying to discover the truth because it wasn't adding up even as he was finding out stuff from his own government and Prosper and what he could remember and everybody around him and hearing what the arrivalists were saying too and what the annex people were saying. He's like, I have two sides, but still I'm not sure what the truth is. Like there's still enough in between this to be like, something is weird. What is the big picture? That's a big question in this book is what is really happening? Cause this is just so, so trippy. And I tried to guess so many times through the book, like so many of these, it's like, okay, oh, okay, it's this, it's this. No, maybe not. Next guess. It's like so, so trippy. It was finding out finally what it was later. I was like, ha ha, I did feel vindicated. I was like, I was right. And yet it's not exactly. So there's that, there's that. Okay, I think I have to do the spoiler section now and then we will talk about the final feelings of the book and the rating at the end. So just skip this section, jump to the end time skip because um, I think I have to delve into spoilers now at this point because otherwise I, yeah, I'm not sure what else to say about this book. My brain is slowing down. I need caffeine. The first spoiler is the whole vindicated about what it was because that had been one of my thoughts. That had been one of my thoughts and then the other part of what it was had also been one of my thoughts, but there was just different things that it didn't make sense until you find out that it's really kind of a combination effect. I know I said this is spoilers, but I don't want to ruin that. So yeah, but because of that though, it's really why it happened and the end of the world, like parts in the book too, in like before you find out what's happening and the way the weather was changing and what's going crazy with the weather. Like one of my notes I put, where did I put it? I said, what kind of weather is this? It seems manufactured Hunger Games stuff. If so, then why did it stop? Because the weather was, it was like popping up this and that. And then it was just calm, everything calm. And at that point they were out on a boat on the ocean and like huge, huge storm popped up only to be perfectly calm like five seconds later. So yeah, there was very weird things going on around the island of Prosper. Very, very weird. And I feel like a lot of the time looking back that this was happening, it was stuff from before when the world was actually ending. Yes, the way that played out was quite amazing. I really it, it seemed so real and it made sense that it would it could happen to our planet the, the second spoiler though is a bit sad because it, it deals with Callie Callie is going to be a character that comes up earlier in the book and you meet her and Proctor's really unsure about this girl and you know he just feels connected to her like protective of her like she's his you know daughter kind of like this is the person he should have adopted and everything if him and his wife had decided to adopt he's like this could have been my daughter um so the real story of Callie and what happened is just unbelievably sad and it kind of sets up the events of maybe why things went the way they did with Elise 
earlier in the book and her mind space and just the whole situation. It, it really paints the picture and makes you understand why Prospero was set up the way that it was. And the last biggie 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 <laughs> thing that I can say but not say is oh my god finding out who the people of the annex were and that this was actually intentional. Even though it made everybody hate that director when they found out oh my god and the fact that he did it intentionally i just think there could have been better ways to go about it like maybe making it more even spaced i understand i do understand his motivations and why he chose to do this it's like okay if like they had it easy then they wouldn't actually work i i, mm, I can understand but I could also argue that there could be more balance, like through the life cycles and stuff. There could have been more balance. That's all I'm saying. Some people could have born, been born into luxury in one and then this, but then of course if they're never remembering, like if they're always wiping the memory. But I feel like something is remembered at some point. I don't know. I just, ugh, there could have been some other way to do it maybe. So the final feelings of the book, it really, really kept me guessing, like obviously through all of it, I was trying to figure out what is really going on as much as Proctor was. I wanted the truth. I wanted to know what was up with these people, especially once the government kept like trying and trying to stop him and provide false information and stuff. And I'm like, who knows the truth? How many people are involved in this? What is happening? But, but, I do feel like the book could have been shorter. Like, I was so happy, you know, with the book. I really enjoyed it. I wanted to be able to sit down and read it more because I just needed to find out what was happening. But, overall, once I reached the end, I mean, thinking back, some parts were a little drawn out. Totally drawn out. And it's not details. Maybe it was the feelings-y parts. Not even that. I don't know. I'm not sure what but somebody could have trimmed it down some mitch. Mm -hmm. The epilogue. Some books don't need them. This one I am glad that it included because it did help you wrap up some of the characters because the ending does not. The ending, you would just never really know what happened to them. But with the epilogue, it did give you this glimpse into where they ended up, what's happening. But yet again, kind of too long. Could have, uh, could, could have been with the shorterness. So, happy with the ending. It, everything came together. It was, it was kind of good. There were some cons to it. Like, Proctor, through most of the book, in the fact, but I mean, in the fact that he is just a normal Prosper and he doesn't notice the support staff, but he is oblivious and doesn't actually try, even once he is starting to notice the problems here, he is so wrapped up in finding his own truth and finding about this one specific thing that he is still not noticing what's going on around him even when clues are being laid out he doesn't even try to investigate and that's kind of frustrating when you couldn't find any information about this one thing that you were specifically looking for but you have recently heard of something else and you don't take the opportunity to try to find out anything about that either you're just like rats this didn't work oh well let me go on out should try to do work now so sometimes proctor sometimes proctor just wasn't very likable and i don't know i don't know there's there's that but overall though really really enjoyed the book it was a 4.75 stars i'm so glad that i read it i'm so glad i went to pick it up yes very, very glad especially you know I have made a dent in my actual, what I'm supposed to read this month now, all thanks to audiobooks. Now I've finally got this one finished too. It's almost the end of the month though. It's okay. It's okay. This one makes up for it, for sure. Maybe you've liked this video enough that you're convinced to pick it up and try it because I highly do recommend this book. It came out so, so good. And um, yeah, hopefully you just enjoyed the video in general and didn't think that I said too many things to give it away or too out of order. I'm very tired and I don't remember half the things I said anymore. 
You can go feel free to check out some of my other videos though and if you're liking my content subscribe and join us for future book reviews, unboxings, vlogs, and general bookish content. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're finding something awesome to read and I'll see you later. Bye.